The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the April 15th. The magical Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie. Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And, of course, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we get to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We get to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but more importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we get it. We've got you covered. Let those fingers do the walking. Send me a quick email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, just put radio show question. And, of course, in our Tiger's Den, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on magical, magnificent Monday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network, I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. we got the uh, markets trading in the red. All the indices down. Spot VIX index up 60 pennies. The S&P is off about 5. The uh, uh, Dow is down about 42. NASDAQ 100 off 16. Russell's down 7. Uh, semiconductors are off uh, 8. Or is it? Semis off about 13 points, 8 tenths of a percent. Trannies are down 9 tenths of a percent or 99 buckaroonies out there. Gold's off 3 bucks. Silver's up 1 penny. Light sweet crude off 46 cents. I lead the charge upside. Booking holding 7 bucks. Anthem up 8. Uh, electronics for Imaging Inc. up 8. That's 28%. Mercado Libre up 8 as well. Alliance Data Systems leading the charge dollar-wise to the downside. 9% or $17. Uh, you've got Amazon off 8. Netflix down 7. Goldman off six. So there's plenty to look at. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. No questions yet. So let's take a tour of the indices and get a feel for where we're at. And let's start with the S&P 500. So we're going to put up the daily chart here for the S&P 500. We'll skip, we will skip the uh, futures contracts just for the moment. Uh, at 109 in the afternoon, here's what we know about the S&P 500. Price is sitting right on its Stevie Green line, its oscillator on change line at the 2902 level. So, so far, a test of support. Just a few points below that are certainly a uh, close below the open of Friday, which is 2900.86. Uh, it's only a few points from where we're at. That would become a bearish engulfing candle if that were to occur at today's close. Again, the number for the S&P cash that you're watching today is 2,900.86. A close at or below that will be a bearish engulfing candle session and price would be below Stevie's green line. What does that mean? That means potential topping. That would also mean price moving back to support. And so we would have to go find support. To do that, what you and I would do is we would shift over and take a look at the uh, equity futures contract, the ES mini. Let's go do that. Let's do that by taking a look at the four-way for the ES Mini. Now we say, huh, this is something to think about. So let's just say that the S&P cash generates that bearish engulfing candle today. The same setup is not in place for the ES Mini because futures were trading overnight and so forth. In order for the ES Mini to generate the same type of candle, uh, it would need to close below 2892 out there. 
So that, in essence, would be its number. So, in other words, you could have a confirmation in the cash indice, but not so in the ES mini. Again, we would look to the ES mini for support, but what you and I notice is that support happens to be old resistance. Now, we were looking at a daily chart for the cash indice. We're also looking at a daily time frame chart for the ES mini. And support here is 2,900 even Steven. The actual low so far today has been 2,902 ticks, 2,900.50 out there. So maybe the oscillator and change line, Stevie's green line fails, but at a minimum, in order to really confirm the potential for some type of change in trend in the cash indice, you can use the number I gave you there. And then what I would do is I would take a look and see if we've closed on the ES Mini when the contract closes this afternoon below 2,900 even, Stephen. If we do, then you've got price pulling back to 2,876. That would be a support line, uh, meaning the center of its box out there. So it's a bullish structured box. So And you have a trend line, a little rising trend line uh, for the ES Mini. So that would really become support. When would a change of trend occur? Yes, when would a change of trend occur as you're looking at this chart? Because it's it's very clear. And if something's very clear, then I want it to be very clear in your mind with regard to the difference between a pullback and a retracement into support versus a change in trend. Now, that Rhodes Momentum Indicator signal we took a look at inside the S&P 500 could be, could if it were to come to fruition today, could be a topping signal. It's not until we see price break through support levels that we can say there's a change in trend. The ultimate level of support inside the ES Mini, we'll look at this first, the S&P, is 2860.13 as we speak today. That's the bottom of the profile. That is the level that price would need to close below in order for there to be a change in trend. What we can see right now is prices above the top of that daily box out there. The pullback today was nothing more than a test of support. So the market still, even though you've got red figures out here, it still remains bullish. Especially when we take a look at the S&P 500 via the ES Mini. Because here's what you and I also know. We know that the ES Mini on a weekly basis is above the top of its weekly profile. It says it wants to get back to its all-time high. I say higher than that. I say the trend line if it is to do that. That's running off the January 29th high, running off of the high here from uh, September 17th, and that gives us a move into the 3,000 level. Now, with price being above the top of the monthly profile, the month is not over. You're still trading above it. That certainly was resistance, doesn't appear to be resistance, not at least on April 15th. That number is 2892. And the quarter, of course, doesn't close until June 30th. But price is trading above that resistance level of 2885. So how do we summarize this? Well, let's summarize it like this. The S&P 500 cash is showing us the potential today, the potential, not right now, not as 1 o'clock or 114, because price was just testing support. But should we get a sell-off into the end of the day, you know what the price to look at, and then you understand some of these other support levels that would have to be broken in order for a change in trend to occur versus this just being some type of retracement. And at this stage, for the S&P 500, it's not even some type of retracement. Now, let's not stop there. Let's go to a break. I'll, uh, I'll take a few breaths of air. Not that I need them. When we come back, let's go take a look at the Dow, the other indices, unless I have requests in the Tiger Stand or requests from you by phone or by email, snail mail. Nah, that's not snail mail, that's real mail. We'll be right the Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
the TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we took that first segment and kind of broke apart the um, the S and P 500 by looking at the S and P cash indice as well as the uh, equity futures contract. So we're going to do the same thing for the Dow, but we're going to start with the Dow um, by looking at this chart here. Now, this chart takes a look at the Dow priced in both dollars, U.S. dollars, which you're familiar with, as well as the Dow priced in euros. What we can clearly see here is uh, really two consolidation patterns in play. But the consolidation pattern that's solid uh, is the uh, Dow priced in dollars. Now, the reason why I say it's solid is because we have had multiple tests of the high. And the high that I use for the consolidation is not the all-time high, but the high from January in 2018 at the 26,616 level. We've really only got one test, and that's this month here for the Dow priced in uh, euros, but the Dow priced in euros has made a new intraday, intramonth, because a monthly chart we're looking at, intramonth high out there. That really bodes well for the Dow longer term because the Dow price in euros never, did I say never? I mean never tops before the Dow in dollars also tops. Now they could do them simultaneously, or the Dow price in dollars may top just slightly earlier than uh, the Dow priced in euros. But this here, this pattern suggests higher price. But here's what we know right now with regard to the Dow price in dollars. It has not taken out, it has not even tested its all-time high out there. So that always makes you and I say, hmm, something to think about. And the reason is, is that it's in a consolidation pattern, clear consolidation pattern. And what this means is until you bust out the highs, and quite frankly, it's really not busting out the highs. It's busting the diagonal line, the little rising trend line from January 1st high 
the actual high in October of 2018. That's really the level where price would need to break above in order for there to be a real breakout. So knowing that the Dow hasn't broken out and knowing that there's still the possibility because when consolidations occur, price can move from the top all the way down to the bottom, which we've got marked as the 23,377 level. So we're going into taking a look at the Dow from that perspective. Now let's go back and take a look at the Dow cash indice out here. Give me a moment while I change to a different uh, set of worksheets out here. And we'll pull over the Dow. So like the S&P 500, what we can see here is that the Dow daily um, actually had a similar rose momentum indicating indicator top signal out here on the trading session of April the 5th. The very next trading day, you get a gap to the downside. A gap to the downside, it says open falling window. On my chart, is actually a bearish reversal candle at a pattern completion, that rose momentum indicator signal out here. So we already have the topping signal. And until that high out here, the high from April 5th gets taken out to the upside, which, by the way, that price point is 28 I'm sorry, 26,487. The Dow's already generated a topping signal. Now what we can all see, though, is price is trading back above Stevie's green line. It says we have a rising price oscillator above zero. It's a very bullish pattern. So now we have competing bullish and bearish patterns out here. Um, if you got a move lower below Stevie's a green line. Let's just use what that level is, likely approximately uh, 26,309.72, a close below that. You'd have a near, another bearish reversal candle near resistance out here. And uh, so that would say, okay, maybe topping signal. But the Dow's already given a topping signal. What hasn't it done? Well, that takes us back here to the daily and weekly and monthly and quarterly profile levels. If we take a look at the daily in order for their Dow to break out to its next move higher, should it wish to do so, it will need to take out resistance. That's the top of that daily profile. 26,509 is the level. So in essence, where the S&P or the ES Mini is trading above the top of all four time frames, daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, the Dow equity futures contract is trading within the profile. Now, that doesn't mean that it's bearish. Uh, in fact, it's bullish at this stage here. And we'll say bullish because uh, this profile, current profile, is above the prior profile. So that's a trending-based system. And in order for the Dow to give a change in trend signal, the number would be 26.017. Price would have to close below that. About another, uh, let's see if I can do this, 360 points, 350 points lower than where we're trading right now. That's what it would take. And it would have to be a close below 26,017 in order for there to be a change in trend in place. Now, the Dow is trading above the top of the weekly profile. It's trading above the top of the monthly profile. It's trading above the top of the quarterly profile. Each of those longer term time frames, which I would argue have more meaning than the daily, because the shorter the time frame, the more the noise. The more the noise, the more the noise. And who likes noise out there? If you want to kind of eliminate the noise, understand what price is doing and larger time frames. So we've got, we have a look at the weekly, the monthly, and the quarterly. And each of these are saying, hey, no big deal with regard to even the pullback at its lows today. No big deal out here. The big deal would come with a close below 26,017. Now it doesn't just end there. We can go take a look at the NQ and do the same thing. And to do the NQ, what you and I will do is we will take the NDX 100. So as we take a look at the NDX 100, we can see that right now it actually has a bearish reversal candle. It has a bearish engulfing candle. The reason that it does is because uh, Friday's session was a very small body candle. Now, price has been moving higher doing less relative energy. In essence, the NDX 100 is generated the bearish message, and price is trading below Stevie's green line. So this has generated the bearish message it needs to to tell us of a top. Oh, really? Well... I don't know. Let's go check out the O'Reilly. If we take a look at what the NQ is doing on a daily time frame, the NQ is trading right at the top of its box, 76.33. 
We're at 7632. In order for a change in trend to occur here in the NQ, we would need to see a close below 7463. That's quite a ways down from where we're trading right now. If price continues to trade above 7633, that's the top of the profile out there. There ain't no way. There ain't no way that the move higher is over. Well, we're trading above the top of the weekly. We're trading uh, below the top of the monthly. So that gives you a new price target. So assume the daily, if the daily closes above 7633.75, that then opens us up to the monthly profile that has a price target of 76.65. Meanwhile, back at the quarterly time frame chart, price is trading above the top of that level. 7505. Is that important? Well, if we just simply open up the quarterly time frames out here and we look at past history, when prices traded above the top of a quarterly profile, how important has that been to telling you about the larger move? At this stage here, we've got to go mucho grande, mucho grande importante. Yeah, it means a lot. Now, again, from a quarterly perspective, we're not there till the end of June, so we can't really use April 15th, 2019, as a time frame to make our decision about the quarterly. But so far, so good. So how do we wrap all this up here, folks? How do we? Hey, until those lows of those market profiles on a daily basis are taken out, the trend of the upside remains intact. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com
Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, the first question we've got comes from Ruby inside the Tiger's Den, who was long silver. And uh, she's asking me my take on uh, today's price action. So, Ruby, if we take a look at um, my Ninja Trader chart out here, where we can easily see uh, the uh, Tommy DeMarc uh, set up trend line support and resistance level, the thing that you like about being long today is that price, if we were to have picked an area, just using this chart, as price was making that Rhodes Momentum Indicator topping signal here, if we were to choose a point and you were to have gone short then, and, and we were to have chosen a point, I know I've said that three times, so I'll try to make a point, um, that what price, what, where we would have targeted price was that solid red line on my screen that uh, was a is a Tommy DeMarc setup trend line that began with that nine count to the upside. The green ones are the resistance levels uh, from nine counts to the downside. But you're interested in the hey, in essence, what did price do today? Now I don't know whether you went long today or not, but what price did today? Let's look at the good, the bad, and the ugly out here. The good is price has held that level. By the way, that level, uh, as we take a look at the May contract, let me get that price for you if I can is 1481 so as long as price is above 1481 that's good the ugly would be a close below that because then a key level of support will have failed for you now we've got the good we've got the ugly did i say ugly i would call that ugly if i said bad i meant ugly right now what's bad is that price remains below stevie's red line and it's red which means there's a falling price oscillator below zero. And so the next level, Ruby, that you want to see price close above, not tag and reject, is 1502. Now, that number will change by a penny or two along the way, but right now it's 15.027 out there. That's the key level where price would at least need to close above in order for you to say, okay, you've got the first attest of support. Now you've taken out a level of resistance. What's the next level of resistance out here? Well, let's go to these charts here, which give us the daily and the weekly set of TAS market profiles. Let's expand that out. And as we take a look at this, one of the things we're going to notice is that silver also came back to its weekly point of control, 1476. Did it hit it exactly? No, it did not. It got down to 1479. Close enough for you, close enough for me. Now, we know about a weekly profile is that weekly or intermediate term time frame traders believe that this is where fair value is, both buyers and sellers at the 1476 level. Because the bottom of that box is 1458 out here, and we're using Stevie's synthetic contract here, Ruby, so the pricing may be off just a tad, but I need you to look at this visually. If I try to put up the, um, May, uh, the uh, May contract, I'm not going to have this same data, and I want to go with this data. So um, I don't even, if it's, we're trading at 1495 on this, where's the current May silver contract? Is that trading at... Uh, where do I have that? Fourteen ninety-five. We're at, yeah, we're at same price, so we're good there. Uh, so just disregard what I just said. No, don't disregard anything I say. Well, you can. So here's the next levels. Let's say upside levels that you're looking for. You'd like to see price get back inside the daily box. That means it closes about fifteen oh eight. Ultimately, you'd like to see price close over the top of the daily box. That is fifteen twenty nine. Fifteen thirteen is the top of the weekly profile. So I get being from it from from what we looked at in the daily time frame. I get price coming to support. Let's say you bought support. Don't let support fail out here. Now the ultimate support level here, now that we have this daily chart with multiple time frame profiles on it, well that's a mouthful out there, 1458 would be another level of support that you don't want to see a close below. So when we take a look at silver, that's what I see in silver. Uh, the shorter term time frame charts, I don't know if you're really trading this from a short term standpoint. If you are the 60-minute, wants you want to see it close about 1503. That's the top of its bearish structured hourly time frame chart. Um, the uh, two-hour time frame, you're already above the top of that box, 1492. That took place as we were coming on the air. Um, the uh, four-hour chart doesn't have resistance, so you get up to 1524. You can see that box is bullish in structure out here, which means you really need to see price more towards the high of the day which is at 1499 
to, to really clear the center line of that box out there. So, Ruby, I hope that helps you out with regard to what Stevie sees when we look at the charts for high ho silver out there. All righty. Let me see if we've got any other questions that have come in. We don't. Very quiet out there in uh, TFNN land. So uh, let's, uh, let's, let's help Steve-O out here. Tell me what it is that you want to uh, look at. Um, so what should we go to next out here? Just kind of navigating. Let's just take a peek around at some of the other charts. Let's take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, see where its advanced decline oscillator reading is. Why? Because when it's below zero, it tells you buyers are in control. That's the center panel. When it's above zero, which it is, 1803 is the current reading, tells you buyers are in control. We look at the bottom of this panel. That's just looking at the spot volatility index, which is trading at 1256 in relationship to its 50-day exponential moving average. That's at 1490. So it is in bullish formation as we speak right now. So the message of the New York Stock Exchange, when we take a look at this chart, is bullish. Is there a confirming message here? Meaning, if we go take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, let's do this, let's pull this chart over here. What are its chart patterns? We take a look at its chart patterns. We know that the pullback earlier this morning was nothing more than a test of support of Stevie's green line, 12, 9, 45, 29 to be specific. Do we see any topping signal from a daily time frame? We take a look at the New York Stock Exchange. And the answer is no, we do not. Not a single solitary one. So we take a look at Stevie's charts. We take a look at the chart patterns that assist you and I with identifying tops and bottoms out there. And the New York Stock Exchange, as we speak, as 137 is in full-out bullish mode out there. Okay, so we've taken care of that. Uh, Goldilocks. So what about gold? Ruby asked about silver. Certainly somebody wants to know about gold. So what can we say about gold? Well, not much. Just kidding. Let's take a look at what is it that we need to see take place in gold out here. And the answer is, I'll come over to this five-hour time frame chart. The five-hour time frame chart, I don't have a bottoming signal. I mean, I don't have an A to B equals CD to the downside that I could draw in here. I don't have a nine-count setup. I don't have price moving lower, doing less relative energy. That's how we formed the most previous bottom here, letter G, uh, way back here around April the 5th or 6th or 4th, sometime right around there. Uh, you did get a key reversal at support. So the only, not the only, but a positive thing that we can say is that support, here's my cross here, that support in essence was tested. The last time that price was down here, the bulls stepped up. They drove price from this uh, the 1285 level all the way up to the 1314 area out there. In order for gold to get its mojo back, it's got to get back above Stevie's red line. And that's at 1293.90. So it's had a decent, decent, um, at least counter trend rally thus far. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, John writes in, he wants to take a look at TLRD, that's Tailored Brands, Inc. And his question is, will this be moving up soon? So if we take a look at this, John, and we just start with the daily, the weekly, and the monthly timeframes, here's what we're going to see. Prices below all of the bottom of those profiles. So in other words, prices below levels of support. The lowest level of support came from the daily time frame. That price point was 808. You can see how uh, each of the counter trend rallies found resistance at the 808 price level. So that's going to be a real key level uh, to be uh, watching. If we pull over Stevie's other charts here that help us to identify bottoming type patterns, uh, let me try to break the pull this up. We, we it has potential if it could create a bullish reversal signal candle today. In order for that to occur, you would need to see price close over seven dollars and sixty six cents. You're at seven fifty. Do those uh, sixteen pennies make a difference? All the difference in the world out there. Now, you'd like to see that happen to be a bottoming signal because price is above Stevie's red line, which is at 697. That becomes the next level of support. Remember, we couldn't find support out here in the charts uh, because price was below the bottom of their profiles. But on a daily time frame, uh, we can see support being Stevie's green line. If we pull over for you the weekly time frame, uh, do we have any bottoming signal out here? The answer is no. Not a single thing. And in this case, price would need to close above 828, Stevie's red line on a weekly basis, excuse me, in order to generate a bullish signal. So the weekly says, I want lower price. The daily says, I want lower price. I'm trying to form a bottom, but it hasn't given us the signal. The monthly time frame, this uh, TLRD, its most recent monthly high was formed with one of those Tommy DeMarc set up trend count number nine out there remember ruby and i uh ruby and i were taking a look at silver and we had identified a key level of support that on a pullback in this case here we would have done the same john on a monthly basis because it made that top with on bar number nine could have been eight nine or the bar after nine in this case here it was nine the ideal pullback which it did move back to and test and reject 
was back on January. It looks like January of 2019. But now price here in March, we're in April, but in March of 2019, price got below that level. So that's the, the good, the bad, and the ugly. That just really, once you got below that, that's the ugly. That's why I had uh, shared with uh, you, everyone out there, and Ruby, that, man, if it closes, if silver closes below, that daily red uh, Tom DeMarc set up uh, trend line out there, that would really be ugly from a price perspective. So I don't see a, a bottom, uh, not just yet, inside of TLRD, and I hope that that uh, helps you out. And uh, thanks for writing in. Thanks for being uh, my wingman. Uh, the person writing in today. So no other request out there. And um, uh, so I don't know what we're going to do because I like to just have requests. Um, I like this to be of interest to you. Uh, so let's go look at Lightspeed Crude. Um, let me do this here. Give me a second off screen. Let me try that. Let's come over to our four time frame profiles and let's look at Lightspeed Crew, which is trading at 63.41 out here. And uh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? What do I need to do? Not much. Let's look at the daily chart out here. So here's what we know. And on this daily time frame chart, we know that price got up to a resistance level, being the top of the weekly profile. That's the green horizontal line. That was priced at 65.40. Didn't get all the way up there. The actual high so far that we have seen was 64.79. Yeah, 64.79 versus 65.40. Not too bad. Now you've got a new profile that is formed, daily time frame. On Friday's price action, price tested the top of that profile. Again, the top of the profile, 64.79. The high, 64.65 out there. Now we've got price pulling back. You can see that the bottom of these profiles have held a support. Again, the difference was there was a three-day time period back in February 7th, the 8th, and the 11th, where price was below the daily profile, but it was above the bottom of the weekly. So it was nice that you happen to have a secondary level of support that you go to to say, okay, maybe not so fast. You want to see a break of both. If you were to see light sweet crude close below 61.92, then you would have a change in trend signal. That change in trend signal right now would say, okay, the target would be 52.34. We're not there just yet. So in the case of light sweet crude, watch 61.92 if price were to pull back to that level out here. If I look at my uh, other daily time frame chart out here, what do we know? We know that Lightspeed Crude thus far has topped with a Tommy DeMarc setup nine count. So we know that, the, and, and not only did it do that on the trading session of, that day, by the way, was April 9th, but on Friday, uh, what Lightspeed Crude did was generated a bearish shooting star candle out here. Uh, so it's definitely given us the topping signal, so to speak. And the way that shooting stars work, my experience, the majority of the time is they either work and work right away or they don't. It's not 100%. But what we are seeing take place right now is it is working. When I say working, I mean prices moving. We've got a little bit lower uh, move today. So that's working out here. Disregard that little blue dash line out there. That's a resistance line. I don't use that as support uh, when price is coming back. Um, so this would suggest to Stevie that uh, Lightspeed Crude is uh, getting ready to uh, make its way down in the 61.92 to 62.24 level out there. And that's what Stevie sees when we take a look at light, sweet, crude. So what else? Uh, if we take a look at bonds, what are bonds doing out here? Uh, my TAS market profiles have disappeared. So we'll switch from that chart. We'll come over here. We'll take a look at a weekly and a daily chart. We'll take a look at Stevie's green line. You'll see green dashes. Those are representative of the weekly profile. Price is sitting right on top of that, uh, right at that. That, in essence, says that uh, Treasury bonds have pulled back to their weekly profile level, not profile, their weekly support level, Stevie's green line. Now, if price were to close below, we'll call it 147 out there. Um, then what we would be looking at 
and we're at 147. So let's call it below today's low. Let's make it a little bit easier. Today's low is 146.22. If price were to close below that, that would suggest that uh, we're going to see a further pullback inside of uh, T-bond futures out there. So right now we've got the Dow off 25, the S&P down three, the NASDAQ off 14. We've kind of covered the markets, I think, in general out here. Um, take a look at light sweet crude, gold, silver, and uh, we're about to go into our last break here before we do the uh, two minute wrap, so to speak. So um, um, there's really not much more to say. So hang tight. We'll try to close this thing out, and we'll be back in just a few minutes. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of living a primal lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. So 154 in the afternoon, we've got the Dow off uh, about 24 points, no big deal. The S&P off four points, no big deal. NASDAQ off 14 points. Uh, we've got each of the cash indices uh, uh, depending on where they close, 
uh, potentially giving us uh, short-term topping signals. Now, at this stage, we have to call them short-term topping signals because there are key levels of support that would have to be broken in order to generate some type of change in trend signal out there. So, uh, look, I'm going to be filling in for Tom from the 3 to 4 o'clock hour. So close to 4 o'clock, we'll be able to take a look at those cash indices and understand whether they've generated uh, such a signal, we'll probably be able to then take a look at the shorter term time frame charts, a 30 minute chart, for example, for the uh, in the equity futures contracts to identify some key levels of support or resistance for overnight trading. And, uh, and so in essence, that's kind of how we'll wrap up the show. As we speak right now, everything still looks bullish, very bullish for the S&P 500 from the standpoint of its uh, equity futures contract, the ES Mini. Price is trading above the uh, top of the uh, box and uh, everything, so uh, uh, the top of all of its profile levels. So the S&P 500 looks to be the uh, most bullish of all of the equity futures contracts out there inside the, uh, and, and here's the NQ. The NQ looks relative, is, is similar, but it's got a resistance level up at the 7778 area that it will need to uh, break through, uh, really, quite frankly, in order to be able to take price to uh, all-time highs inside the uh, queues. Now, uh, with regard to the Qs, if we take a look at the equal weighted ETF out here, that uh, ticker symbol, by the way, is um, QQEW. That uh, made its way above its all-time highs uh, quite a while ago. So, uh, and it's typically a leading indicator. So the message of the equal weight for the NDX 100 is uh, very, very bullish. So thanks for being here, folks. I'll see you at about 3 o'clock or back here tomorrow at 1. Take care.